everybody. It's episode 23. It's called A World of Difference. Last episode, we had a street full of residents who were extremely paranoid and extremely reactive to a loss of power. And the crazy stories from a kid called Tommy, who fed them stories about aliens and Ooh, they're going to try and conquer us. Turns out the stories were correct, but they ended up killing themselves anyway. The aliens were just like a few miles away, watching. Two binoculars or something. So, what are we going to see next this time? We're going to see, are the aliens just going to be still there? And they're just like having a chat going, well, this is a world of difference to our planet. Uh, where everything's peaceful. That wouldn't make any sense because they're just like they're trying to conquer Earth. They seem very uh, reasonable about it, you know. They're like, "Oh, we'll just sit back and let them kill themselves, and then we'll have the planet all to ourselves." None of this. Oh, we'll get them. Those Earthlings. Ooh. We didn't really get their their motivations, why they're coming to our planet, how many of them there are. Uh, Maybe there's just that those two dudes, you know? Uh, but we'll see. Well, we won't see because it's over. But we'll see what this one's about. I expect. I'm gonna make a bet. Nothing to do with aliens or different planets. We're be- looking at a tableau of reality. Okay. It's a tableau of reality. Now, this is Arthur Curtis, age 36. 36. Who also is real. My wife and I haven't gotten a thing for Tina's birthday party yet. Oh, that's right. It's Saturday afternoon, isn't it? <laughs> How do you know about that? Dude? Could you call and see if you can change the plan reservations to Saturday night? Oh, of course. Standing at the bed, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's the first real vacation Mary and I have had in years. Saturday night at San Francisco. Here we come. Party, vacation, San Francisco. Got it. He's got a secretary. She takes care of everything. Don't know what he does. Okay. Everything looks looks normal to me. Oh, careful, dude! It's the twilight zone. Phones don't work in the twilight zone. Well, what, what did I say? Is she still out there? Cut. Ooh, he's on a set. Are you just acting, dude? Uh, he doesn't know. He's having one of his delusions. He thinks he's the character in the show. Come on, Jerry. Come on, Jerry. Not this again, Jerry. Is it so hard to make a phone call? Well, we are in the twilight zone. He's gonna go into his secretary and be like, "What the? What's going on, Sally?" What's the matter, Mr. Reagan? Did you ever notice this wall here? Where are you going? Why's a boy? You're on the edge. Hey, just a little gag. All right. It's a practical joke. Everything's a gag in the twilight zone. You're phoning your wife to tell her to meet you downtown at three fifteen. But I am. Then we'll go to San Francisco. I don't know you. I don't know any of you. It's like the opposite of that first episode where. Nobody was around? No, there's too many people. Is he going to try and find his wife and daughter? Or is he going to stay in the set? He's staying in the set. <laughs> For some reason. <laughs> I don't know what's the matter with you. Shall I use a stage phone? No, of course not. If he finds out, there's no telling what he's doing. Go on, go on, go on. He could call anybody. Jerry. <laughs> Where's the nearest phone? Jerry. My name is Arthur Curtis. He's just a method actor. You know? Is this one work? Would you give me the telephone number of Arthur Curtis? Oh, <laughs> it's the classic, uh, you don't exist phone call. Oh, no, no, you're mistaken. Of course there's a phone there. No, no, it's not an unlisted number. I I know there's a phone Just there. go there. Jerry, I want to talk to you in your dressing room. Jerry, you're not well. you've had a psychotic break. I'm getting out of here. I'm going home. I wonder if he does have, like, any family in real life? Stop calling me Jerry. My name is Arthur such and such. Jerry, if you're drunk again, Take so... Take your hands off me. Mrs. Reagan. Not... Mrs. Reagan anymore. Ooh. Can I talk to you in private? Divorced. Coming with me. Run for it. Jerry's having a nervous break. Take the car. I wonder if they filmed around the um, the actual studio lot. Now listen to me, whoever you are. I don't know I you. I don't know who you think I am, but you're wrong. My oh. name's Arthur. My name is Arthur Curtis, and I haven't the slightest idea what you're talking about. My wife's name is Marion. I have a little daughter named Tina. We live at two Yeah, should have brought seven. the pictures with him. Huh? Is he even going to find a house there? His mind is gone. He's just gone. He swears he's Arthur Curtis. You know the character he's the playing? The character he's playing in the picture. 
<laughs> I love the music, as if anybody in the audience is like going, who is this Arthur he keeps talking about? I can't understand it. It's, it's around here somewhere. I, I must. I live here. Do you? What do you want, Jerry? Maybe they can get back together, you know? Maybe she'll like the new him, you know? Hello, my name is Arthur, and do I live here? Tina. Tina. Oh, that's not her. Get in the car. Get in. Do you rather go to jail for attempted assault? Yeah, you nearly murdered that kid. Is this Maple Street? Shit. Get in the Get car. In. Get in the car. She left the old Jerry because he was so boring, but now that you're crazy. They have a cool car, by the way. She's gonna call the cops. Get out, Jerry. Where is this? Where I don't I don't recognize it. It looks like a big place though, maybe he makes a lot of money from his acting. This guy? What does he want? I want my money before he goes off in his next binge. Binge? I don't I don't drink. My don't name is it. Arthur. My name is Curtis. I live in Jerry, stop it. Where do you hide the checkbook? Oh you know. I'll find it if I have to tear this house apart. Your guess is as good as mine, lady. If you lose this assignment, we'll have to drop you. Damn it. We can't cover up for you anymore. Hey, He's really putting his heart and soul into the part, though. But you've got to be there tomorrow, Jerry. I don't know what's going on. Jerry. I don't know who you are. I don't know who she is. This isn't my house. Leave me alone. You're going to sign this check, Jerry. You're going to sign it right now. Now listen, this has gone far enough. You people are crazy. Not Gerald Reagan. My name's Curtis, Arthur My Curtis. My name is Arthur Curtis, do you hear me? Listen, I work for... Who do you work for? Operator? The Davis Morton Company. Never heard One... of it. Of course there is! I've worked there for the last seven years! Operator? It's probably the same one he was talking to earlier. He's like, she's like, who the hell is this guy? Well, where's that ambulance? Uh, we've brought you to um, uh, Shrink, and they'd like to talk to you about oh, in his bedroom. Feeling better? Um, as long as you don't ask me who my name. I've known you a long time. Can't you see what's happened? Nope. It's not me, it's the rest of the world that's gone crazy. They took my home, my place of business. What are you showing me? Ooh. It's his entire life in script form. Curtis lives in Woodland Hills with his wife and child. He and still have ample. Stop it! Oh, Jerry. The only information you have about Arthur Curtis it's in here. is written in this script. Jerry, sometimes I'd like to escape myself. Away from this oh, he's turmoil. Having, he's having problems too. No. It's real. I wish it were. For your sake, I wish it were. Maybe you can be like that woman who wished herself into the movie screen? Try and get some rest. I just spoke to the studio a few minutes ago. They're canceling production. Arthur Curtis is dead. Hey, you can't do it. It's my life, dude. I've got to get back. It's too late, Jerry. It's finished. I've got to get back to my office. If you mean the set, they're probably tearing it down right now. No, we've got to get back. Look, take advantage of the situation. He doesn't think he's Jerry, so the house, all its belongings, yours now, dude. Just have to fight Nora for it. Ooh, we're speeding. He's trying to get back to his life before they turn it, tear it down. Ooh, he's back. He just has to get in there. Doesn't matter what room, and then he can imagine himself in the world again. Go, Arthur. Wait, Mr. Reagan, you can't do this. Just go in there, dude. Close your eyes. Don't look at the fourth wall, and you'll be fine. Hey, he's back. He's not looking at it. Oh, what about the pictures of his family? Oh, he's back. He's back. Don't leave me here. Do it, dude. He's back! He did it! He's probably comatose in the real world, but doesn't matter. In here, he's got a loving family. They're going to San Francisco. Marianne. I had a crazy dream, Marion. Oh, she said she didn't actually see you go out. out <laughs> Mr. Curtis? Are you leaving now? Yeah, before they tear it down. Yes. We're going to San Francisco. Well, I have your tickets for Saturday night. Thank you. Oh, go, go. Honey, what's the matter? Please. Don't look back. Honey, let's not wait. Let's go on our vacation right away. What's wrong? We can wait at the airport. Nothing, darling. I just don't want to lose you. What about her daughter? She'll be fine. She has a party. Has Reagan been here? I think yeah, I saw him. he was here a minute ago. But uh, he disappeared. Didn't see him leave. Is he going to see something? Don't go in there, dude. You'll, you'll get trapped. What's he going to see? He's not in his dressing room. 
Where could he be? Wonder where he is. But there are other ways for a man to Ooh, exit from San Francisco. Life. His departure was along a highway and route to the Twilight Zone. I like that. It was a happy ending. You just have to get back in there, you know, before they tear, tore it down. And then use his imagination to, you know. Once you're in the Twilight Zone, you can, you can make stuff like that happen. Just don't make any phone calls. You crazy? Yeah. <laughs> um, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. It reminded me of... Um, it's interesting, The as I was going to say in the middle of the episode, they have... Um, the ages of the main characters are all around the same age so far. In most of the episodes, it's like between 35 and early 40s. That sort of um, age range. And it's no coincidence, I don't think, that Rod Serling himself was right in the middle of that age range. So the stories he's writing, very much... Um, he's writing from the experience of someone who is at that point in their lives. And there seems to be a lot of kind of, I don't want to call it midlife crisis, but a lot of um, episodes dealing with growing up and the difficulties involved in being that age and the stresses and how people cope with that sort of thing. Uh, some of them jump out the window. Some of them drive home to the past. Uh, some of them are so concerned about dying that they make a deal with the devil. You know, uh, it's not not all of them. It's, you know, the ages are, do vary. But I just noticed a lot when Rod specifically mentions the age of the person each time. It's like, wow, they all they all seem to be. It seems to be a cluster around his own age. Uh, a world of difference. Yeah, that was that was good. Two different worlds. It wasn't as metaphorical, you know, as I thought it might be. You know, a world with a pen, a world without a pen. It was very much the real world, and then his his TV, his movie world. He's just a method actor. It's very clear. He's just dedicated to the art. He, he needed that part because he was lose, going to lose everything. So he's like, no matter what happens, I'm not breaking character. The phone doesn't work. I'm going to, you know, see the, the prop guys are like, of course the phone doesn't work. Because it's just a, a movie. But he tried to pick it up and tried to use it and it wasn't working. He's like, what would my character do if the phone wouldn't work? So he, he went off script. <laughs> and that's when the whole thing fell apart. So they should just, you know, they should have had it all wired up and, you know, they should have built his house in the real world, built his actual job, done it all. Then he wouldn't, wouldn't have broken out. His brain wouldn't have exploded. Oh, good one. I like it. I liked it so much. I'm going to watch the next one. It's called Long Live Walter Jameson. Long live Walter Jameson. It's going to be... I mean, we've already had one about immortality. Long live. Could be some sort of... King is dead, long live the king. Could be... I don't know. I imagine the episode's going to be about somebody called Walter. It's going to be 39, <laughs> around that age. Or maybe he's going to be the world's oldest man. He's going to be 97 years old and, you know, he's just sick of it. He's like, oh, I wish I hadn't lived such a long time. All these theories and more on episode 24 of The Twilight Zone. There are only 
36 episodes in the first season. <laughs> Can you imagine if uh, a show nowadays was 36 episodes per season? That'd be fun, wouldn't it? You'd have like, wow, 36 out of 52? What's that? 9 out of 13? You know, almost 9 months of of non-stop stuff. And then you'd only have to wait 3 months and then another 9 months. That'd be great. Instead of the usual thing these days where it's like, well... Here's three episodes, and then, oh, we're having a gap for a couple of weeks, and now here's another three episodes, and, oh, have you forgotten what happened? Doesn't matter, it's Christmas. Two-month break. Hey, have five episodes here. And then, it's it's kind of weird these days. I like the shows that um, drop all together, or when they start, they keep going till the end. Done. Big block. None of this kind of spacing them out over nine months when... There's no real, you know, when it's stop, start, stop, start. <sighs> anyway, come back for next, next week, next time. I don't know. I don't know what, how I'm releasing these. And we'll find out what the deal with Walter Jameson is. Maybe he has a drinky problem, you know, a bit of Jameson. <laughs>